The MiG-23B and MiG-23BN have generally been ignored combat jets. However, they played crucial roles in many battles. Furthermore, their story may contribute to an understanding of the evolution of Soviet military aviation in the first 25 years following the Second World War. Today we're investigating the MiG-23B and BN, the attacker floggers. The MiG-27 is generally considered the attack bomber variant of the Soviet Flagger series. However, before that, there was the short-lived MiG-23B followed by the MiG-23BN. In this video, we will deviate slightly from our usual format. We will take a more in-depth look at the process that led to the creation of these two aircraft while briefly mentioning their design features. The USSR was quite uncertain regarding the appropriate doctrines for its air force during the early stages of the First Cold War. Firstly, it was now the jet age. This type of combat aircraft required different tactics from those used in the piston engine ones. Like their US counterparts, Soviet military planners believed that the atomic bomb diminished the probability of a new large-scale conventional war. Consequently, nuclear bombers would be more significant than tactical strike aircraft. Although the IL-2 was regarded as a highly prized ground attack aircraft during the Second World War, its loss ratio remained significant. Consequently, the Soviet Air Force believed that the successor to the Shtumarvik had no future in the New World and subsequently terminated the IL-40 and Tu-91 programs. The USSR primarily concentrated on fighter, interceptor and bomber projects while NATO focused on various combat jet types including strike and close air support aircraft. Therefore, until the late 1950s, the MiG-15 and MiG-17 fighters and IL-28 bombers were the only available strike and close air support aircraft which were clearly unsuitable for the modern battlefield. Meanwhile, the latest Su-7B introduced into service in 1961 increased the capability a little more but was still insufficient. A report prepared at the time revealed that the Soviet Air Force needed 14,000 new and better aircraft within five years to stay in the race. However, Khrushchev was reluctant to allocate such funds. He turned to a radical yet less costly approach investing in missiles. This relatively new weapon would defend airspace and carry out tactical and deep strikes. Re-equipping many army and air force units with missile systems resulted in a significant decrease in the number of aircraft. So, until the late 1960s, the MiG-15s, MiG-17s, MiG-21s and Su-7Bs remained the only available strike and close air support aircraft, which were still unsuitable for the modern battlefield. The 1967 Six-Day War forced the Soviet Air Force to reassess its doctrines. The Israeli Air Force, utilizing Western equipment and tactics, achieved an unprecedented victory against the Arabs, who employed Soviet equipment and tactics. Consequently, destroying enemy air bases during the early hours of a battle became a mandatory component of strategic plans. The 1967 Six-Day War revealed that securing airfields with air defense missiles and anti-aircraft guns was impossible as the runways, parking areas and airfield facilities were extremely vulnerable even to a solitary aircraft or missile strike. The soundest solution was prompt aircraft dispersal to alternative airfields, unpaved strips and appropriate motorway sections. However, the Soviet Air Force's existing combat jets required long and well-constructed runways. To solve the problem, the USSR initially focused on short takeoff and landing aircraft, resulting in the development of the MiG-21PD in 1966 and the Mikhail Gurievich 2301 in 1967. However, following trials, this concept was deemed inefficient. Thus, the Soviet engineers redirected their efforts towards swing-wing design. During this time, another issue also became apparent. Estimates from that period indicated that the probability of these aircraft successfully attacking small targets on the first attempt did not exceed 10 to 20%. Thus, the USSR required not only a new aircraft but also new navigation and targeting systems. By the early 1970s, with the introduction of first analog and then digital computing technology, it became feasible to simplify low-level flight navigation and precision strikes significantly. It was now the era of new generation jets that could operate in all weather and carry modern air-to-ground munitions. To meet the requirement, 
The Suhoi Design Bureau developed the SU-17, essentially an SU-7BL with swing wings. Entering service in 1969, the new aircraft, whose NATO reporting name is Fitter C, still carried virtually the same sighting and navigation equipment and weapons as its ancestor, although it boasted a slightly increased flight range and improved takeoff and landing capabilities. The company would introduce the SU-17M variant, featuring modern navigation and targeting equipment two years later. On the eve of the 1970s, the Soviet Air Force still could not resolve the issue. This fact gave Mikhail Nigrievich the courage to pursue its own solution. The company proceeded with the concept of a single platform with various mission-specific variants, akin to the French Mirage 3 family, rather than developing a dedicated grand attack aircraft. Initially, Mikhail Nigrievich proposed converting the simple and reliable MiG-21 fighter into a MiG-21 Shah attack aircraft as quickly as possible. However, feasibility studies indicated that achieving the necessary efficiency would be extremely difficult. Consequently, Mikhail Negrievich switched to the MiG-23 fighter, the first prototype of which had already made its maiden flight in 1967. The fourth prototype of the aircraft was in a ground attack configuration, although it retained the cone-shaped nose. The corresponding changes were incorporated into the development of the MiG-23 Shah modification and the preliminary design was released in the same year. The Shah stood for the Sturmavik, meaning attack. It featured a modified nose to improve forward and downward visibility, an armored cockpit and an improved Sokol 23S sighting system. Moscow approved the project in 1970. The first prototype was completed in the early 1971 and made its maiden flight on August 20 of that year. The new aircraft, now designated as MiG-23B, was also equipped with built-in radar warning and electronic warfare systems. The B stood for Bomber Drovshik, meaning bomber. The NATO reporting name of the MiG-23B was Flogger F. The serial production began in 1972 but ceased a year later after 24 aircraft had been delivered. The reason for halting serial production was a shortage of the AL-21 F3 engine for the MiG-23B which was also utilized in the Su-17 and would power the forthcoming Su-24. In the early 1970s, the Soyuz Design Bureau completed the development of its R-29B 300 engine. It was less complex and expensive to manufacture and maintain with a longer service life. Making its maiden flight in 1972, the new MiG-23M fighter variant was fitted with this engine. Mikhail Nigrievich also produced the BN version of the MiG-23B, which featured an AL-21F3 engine. Although some sources assert that the N signifies nuclear, it actually originates from the aircraft's modernized Sokol 23N siding system. Aside from these two modifications, the equipment and weapons were essentially unchanged. The serial production of the MiG-23BN, whose NATO reporting name is Flogger H, commenced in 1973. Mikhail Nigrievich produced 600 MiG-23BNs. The aircraft quickly became popular with operators of the fighter variant of the MiG-23 as it significantly simplified logistical and training requirements. Its export variant for the Warsaw Pact countries was almost indistinguishable from the Soviet model. The aircraft of these nations retained the ability to use nuclear weapons. However, Allied personnel did not have access to the atomic bombs, which were stored in depots of Soviet groups of forces in Europe. They would be delivered to them in the event of a war. The version intended for other pro-Moscow nations was fitted with simplified weapon systems and mission equipment. The MiG-23BN, which retained its automatically adjustable air intakes, accelerated easily to supersonic speed and was only slightly less capable than the MiG-23M regarding altitude, rate of climb, and maneuverability. The powerful R-29B 300 engine with a high air consumption gave the aircraft the nickname Vacuum Cleaner. It occasionally sucked in small objects. Even pins from the wing pylons were drowned into the compressor. As the compressor blades of the R-29B 300 required regular inspection, the MiG-23BN included a pair of specialized hatches in the main thrust niches, just the right size for a person's head. However, in practice, they were rarely utilized as opening them necessitated unscrewing a dozen of tight screws. Consequently, the ground crew generally preferred to access the engine bay through the air intake. 
The flat bottom tapered down nose of the MiG-23BN provided the pilot with excellent visibility and enhanced attack accuracy, allowing time to aim and correct errors. In contrast, the Su-17's large nose quickly obscured the target, leaving mere seconds for aiming. Nonetheless, compared to the fitter, the Flogger was an aircraft that proved challenging to control and maintain stability during flight. Its combat effectiveness also lagged behind the Su-17 in terms of combat load, weapon range, and takeoff and landing characteristics. Thus, Mikhail Grievich introduced a revised version featuring structural enhancements, new targeting equipment, and more efficient armament designated as the MiG-23BM. This aircraft was subsequently renamed as the MiG-27, which has the NATO reporting name Flogger D. Additionally, the MiG-23BM variant equipped with a targeting pod known as the MiG-23BK was subsequently redesignated as the MiG-27K, which has the NATO reporting name Flogger J2. Afghanistan, Algeria, Bulgaria, Cuba, Czechoslovakia, Czech Republic, East Germany, Germany, Egypt, India, Iraq, and the USSR were former operators of the MiG-23BN. Ethiopia, Libya, and Syria continue to operate the aircraft. The single-seat MiG-23BN has a length of 16.7 meters, a wingspan of 14 meters, and a height of 4.28 meters. Its wing area is 37.25 square meters. The aircraft's empty and maximum takeoff weights are 11,200 and 18,600 kilograms respectively. Powered by a 112.8 kN R29B300 afterburning turbojet, it achieves a top speed of Mach 1.7. The aircraft boasts a range of 1,870 kilometers and a combat radius of 850 kilometers. Its service ceiling is 18,000 meters, in other words, 59,055 feet. The MiG-23BN features one 23mm twin-barrel Gusha 23L auto cannon and can carry weapons weighing up to 3,000 kilograms. It can be armed with K-13 air-to-air missiles, HA-23 air-to-ground missiles, rocket pods, and various types of bombs. The Cuban MiG-23BNs took part in the South African border war. The Syrian Arab Air Force deployed its MiG-23BNs during the conflict in Lebanon from 1981 to 1985. In the course of the 1982 Lebanon War, on April 20, 1982, Israeli F-15s shot down two Syrian Flagger Hs. By the end of the conflict, an additional 12 aircraft were lost. The Syrian MiG-23BNs also participated in the Syrian Civil War, and at least one was reportedly shot down, although the government asserted that it crashed due to technical difficulties. The operator that used the MiG-23BN most extensively was Iraq. On the first day of the Iran-Iraq War, on September 22, 1980, these aircraft took part in attacks against key Islamic Republic of Iranian Air Force facilities, including the Wahdadi, Ahajari, and Hamidan air bases. They destroyed three F-5Es, a Hawk air defense system, several runways, and oil and ammunition depots. On that day, three MiG-23BNs were shut down. During the war, the Iraqi Flogger Hs also conducted airstrikes against naval vessels, sinking at least three fast attack craft, heavily damaging the corvette IRIS Nagdi and scoring a hit on Agjutan class minesweeper. Furthermore, they bombed civilian ships. During the war, Iraqi MiG-23BNs took part in other highly crucial missions, and became a formidable adversary for Iranian forces. However, they were considerably vulnerable to Iranian fighters and air defense systems. Although some Western sources claim that Iraq lost 40 MiG-23BNs in just the first year of the war, official post-war Iraqi Air Force documents indicate that the actual loss was only 38 over 8 years. The Iraqi MiG-23BNs also participated in the 1990 invasion of Kuwait. A Hawk missile shot down one. Subsequently, coalition forces destroyed at least 20 MiG-23BNs during Operation Desert Storm. Libya deployed its MiG-23BNs during the Chadian-Libyan conflict. On October 8, 1987, one aircraft was shut down by ground fire. On March 19, 2011, a MiG-23BN of the Free Libyan Air Force was shut down over Benghazi due to a friendly fire incident. On May 2, 1988, 
The Ethiopian MiG-23BNs destroyed a C-47 transport aircraft that had fallen into the hands of Eritrean militants at the Exum airfield. They undertook numerous ground attack and strike missions during the Eritrean-Ethiopian War. During the Tigray War, Eritrean MiG-29s reportedly shot down three Ethiopian MiG-23BNs. The MiG-23B and MiG-23BN symbolized the end of 25 years of doctrinal confusion in the Soviet Air Force, which ultimately embraced Western tactical thinking. Although the Flogger F and H appear to have experienced a high loss ratio, they were as successful as the other ground attack aircraft of that era could be. The MiG-23B and MiG-23BN are in many ways legendary. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.